Strata Florida Abbey is a ruined monastery in mid Wales, famous for its scriptorium where many important manuscripts were copied, and also for its associations with the medieval poet Daphne Ap Gwilym. It was the burial place for the princes of De Habarth, the Welsh princes of the area, and these poems were inspired by visits to the place. Scribe and Scripture I smooth the soft vellum Sunlight warms the cloister I mark the lines with pinpricks My calloused feet are cold I mix the bitter ink Axes fall in distant woodland I choose a goose quill A yeasty scent blows from the freighter I cut the nib to an edge The others bend over their desks and I begin to write, to the glory of God. The Taliesin Stone The artist takes the poet's words, and like the blackbird breaks them on stones, on river boulders. Fragments of mother of pearl, white and gold, tactile swirls of water. Red and blue mosaics, stop and start sentences, like the inks the monks made to copy the ancient stories with their quills on vellum. Skilled artists, they filled historiated letters with miniatures of themselves, bearded faces, cobalt blue infill and gold leaf, such expense, finery for the glory of God. Creed of cataloguing. Perhaps the blood of a monk, he says, as he lays down the manuscript with loving white gloved fingers. We peer enthralled at the stained page. Imagine Brother Cadogan kneeling to pray in the cloister, the swift treason of a knife. He catalogues the monks, Brothers and Nyan's neat letters, Riddach Apuan's distinctive hand. He searches for provenance skims through the rules of his order, turns hierarchies to numbers, logical, precise. He runs his fingers over the spine, tooled leather, end bands, codices gathered into choirs. He is a text seeker, eager to sink himself into litany or missal, the musky echo of flesh, lamp black and salts of old ink. He pictures five scribes, working with aching backs in the dim scriptorium, transcribing annals, copying breviary or psalm, laying gold leaf on a ground of gesso. And the poet, too, buried by the abbey grounds, with his immaculate verses still singing Kawithai in his head. He, too, is classified, codified, as he lies in the valley of flowers under a twisted girdle of yew. Kafal Garuk, friendship. Inseparable, they met in a school bond. Hugh, the boy born lane, with sunshine in his soul, and his shy friend Yan. Their bond as golden as the veins at Dolicothy Mine, as Hugh, the child with steel rods strapped to his legs, grew into the man with backbone. He joked back at life his laughter fizzing and bubbling like a mountain stream. Hugh Shop, as he was known. Yan married his Mavanwi. They were there through Hugh's last illness, a pair of sentinel swans, their arms through his, keeping him afloat. They would lift him into the car, take him on outings, 
to appointments in London, and pushed for a place where he could live, not cloistered in a nursing home, but in his own way. And they stayed with him through the long nights, until his breath loosened like thistledown, and softly floated away. He was buried in the cum, beside his mother and father, at a strad fleer, where Welsh poppies shine, sun yellow through a silver blur of rain. The Pilgrim. All of us are pilgrims in a sense, moving through our lives, looking for something. This is a quote from Glenn Morris, the sculptor who made The Pilgrim. The pilgrim walks across the sky, touches stars with his stick. He is wood and wool and spirit, walks the up and down roads seeking his God. The weather has taken its toll, reduced him to the barren of a winter tree, stubble of wool, his clothes worn out, Still he climbs, reaches for the star beyond. Strata, Florida. Nine yew trees guard this holy place, surrounded by the Cambrian hills, bounded by water from the Tyvee pools, a refuge from this world of haste, where pilgrims pause to hear the sounds of chanting monks, of praise and prayer, drink healing water from the grail where once the sacred blood flowed from his wounds to high births prince, Iragloith Rhys, created here this place of light, where sky and earth speak of the might of God and bring the gift of peace. And sleeping now, the whitened bones of princes lie beneath their stones. Strata, Florida. I went, notebook in hand, but too cold to unglove, to command the fingers, hold the pen, to execute the illuminations the sacred demands of us. Meanwhile the mind, appalled at the ice-caked mud and crisp white grass, was obsessing over soup and more intrigued by the tapping of a bird in the yew tree than expressing the appropriate awe at the possibility that here lies Daffid ab Gwilym, even though his dancing limbs, his breezy gait, the harp, one or two of the racier poems, the sheer enviable sexiness of the man were apparent. So it was the layers, the layers that saved the morning from banality. Layers of dirt, layers of sky and landscape, layers of lives, here where the sloping fields enclose and embrace the time, and time contracts or disappears, enough for us to stop and stare. Marnad Griffith Greig Tos doedd ddwyn trais cynhwynnau o tlws o'n mis Cytaliesyn Mawl. Tristeais neu trais diarw, trwm oer fel y trywyr marw. Treuwyd gwawd neu traid gwadu tros fyd, gwladeiddi ar trais fi. Tros fy ngran led chwelan lif, tri deigr am ŵr tra digrif. Griffydd hi awdle iawdlef, grig ddoeth, myn y grog oedd ef. 
y stig am ei ostegion, y sgwir mawl, e o sgwir mon. Lluniad pob dia llun iawn, a llyfr cyfraith yr iaith iawn. Gofoespa, resting place for David at Gwilym. Between high hill and the plain, between forest and meadow, between glass food and tivy, between this world and the next, between the flesh and spirit, between my birth and rebirth, within this most holy ground, beneath venerable yew, cradled by old stones, I rest.